and nine children. These were the first English families to settle in the Americas, although they would not be permanent settlers. John White realized that they weren't going to prosper there. He went back to England seeking reinforcements. He was delayed there by the Spanish Armada. When he could return in 1590, he was the one who discovered that the colonists were gone. So it's the second group of colonists who are the so-called lost colonists, those whom we can't account for. The only clue to their disappearance was a word carved into a tree, Croatoan, the name of a nearby island. It is also the name of a local friendly Indian tribe. One theory regarding their disappearance is that the Croatoan Indians killed them. There was no evidence of violence at Roanoke, so it certainly doesn't work to say that they were the victims of an Indian attack. Still another theory has it that the settlers moved in with the Croatoan Indians. We now think that probably some of them, that, that they were dispersed and that at least a large chunk of them probably did make their way up to Chesapeake Bay where they lived with various Indian communities and certainly I think many of them if they survived and there's no reason to think that they wouldn't have survived would have become essentially indistinguishable from Indians. They would have become Indians. Many years later in 1607 when colonists did arrive and did found Jamestown they heard a story that there had been a settlement of white people on Chesapeake Bay until just a few months before when it had been wiped out apparently on the order of Powhatan. No one knows for sure what happened to the colonists. In 1607, the English tried again, this time at Chesapeake Bay, and this time they were successful. Several reasons contributed to renewed interest in North America. In 1604, a peace treaty with Spain reduced, but did not eliminate, the danger of a Spanish attack on a new colony. The great merchants and lawyers of London took a new interest in colonization of Virginia, seeing the possibilities of profits. In 1606, King James granted them a charter to colonize and govern Virginia. In December of 1606, three vessels, the Susan Constant, the Godspeed, and the Discovery, left England bound for Virginia. They took the standard southerly route pioneered by Columbus via the trade winds through the Canary Islands, westward to the West Indies, and then north with the Gulf Stream to Virginia. Four months after departing England, on April 26, 1607, the colonists reached the Chesapeake Bay. Seeking some security from Spanish discovery and attack, they navigated the broad James River about 60 miles upstream and established their settlement, Jamestown, beside a marsh on the north bank. But Jamestown lay beside a broad swamp which bred millions of mosquitoes, carriers of malaria. The stagnant river waters of summer retained the garbage and waste of the colonists, creating microbes of dysentery and typhoid fever. One of the colonists had this to say about their living conditions. Our drink was cold water taken out of the river which was at flood tide very salty, and at a low tide full of slime and filth, which was the destruction of many of our men. The, the first year was very bad in Jamestown. It, uh, they landed, I believe, 108 people, and at the end of that first year, 38 people were alive in the colony, or were in the colony. There may have been some leakage. There may have been some people who had decided to opt out and, and find Indian people who would take them in. But that's also a, not an unusual death rate. The 50 percent of the pilgrims died in the first year also. I mean, it's, a, it's first years tend to be hard in, in, uh, for English people in North America. 
The broad coastal plain sustained life for about 24,000 Indians, divided into 30 tribes, but united by an Algonquin language and the rule of a paramount chief named Powhatan. Powhatan's name, in some historical sources, is shown as Wahansanakak. He was, as in some cases, he's referred to as the Powhatan. So that Wahun Sonakak may have been his, his given name. But of course we also know from ver many sources that, that uh, Indians tended to take different names at different stages of their lives. And so it's also possible that if Powhatan was a name, that he, that he had both of these names. Powhatan led the largest and most powerful chiefdom that the English found along the Atlantic seaboard at the time. Powhatan was about 60 years old in 1607, but still an impressive figure of a man with a powerful build and dignified demeanor. He had a large entourage of servants, 40 bodyguards, and 100 wives. And his mode of operating was, I think, not wholly different from that prevalent in Europe at the same time. The dynastic marriage was a, was a principle tool. That is, his, he, he had many children and he would put his sons in as chiefs over villages that he controlled. He would marry the daughters or, or um, sisters of leading men, leading chiefs from other villages. And, and so that, that's a, that was a principal mode on both sides of the Atlantic of adding to your, your territory and your power. At first, the Powhatan Indians regarded the new settlers simply as curiosities, although they were intrigued by their metal tools and weapons. One reason why Powhatan did not wipe out the, the English at Jamestown is that he felt that he could uh, use them for uh, his own uh, advantage. Very quickly, Powhatan realized that one of the items that the English had was copper, you know, the, uh, the all-important trade item. And so why wipe out uh, the colonists when you can keep them alive, especially when they had trade items that, that you needed? The Indians permitted colonization to occur. That's the first thing that's important to notice. Because the early colonists were so inept in the American environment that, that the Indians could have stopped colonization at any time. Unable to predict the future, the Algonquins didn't know the initial few settlers at Jamestown were a small contingent of thousands of colonists who would follow. One of their most common practices really showing their lack of hospitality towards their Indian hosts was that when they ran out of food, many English settlers at Jamestown would simply go up to the nearest Indian village and demand food from the Indians at gunpoint. Even when healthy, many colonists failed to produce food for themselves. They were a mix of gentlemen adventurers and poor unemployed vagrants, neither of whom were accustomed to the kind of hard manual labor needed to establish a new colony. For a time between 1608 and 1609, Captain John Smith commanded the colony and had the colonists working six hours a day in the fields. For his efforts, he received complaints and the disapproval of the colonists. The settlers of Jamestown preferred to acquire food from the Indians. They failed to realize that the Indians didn't have a surplus of food. They raised only what they needed for themselves. At one point they had had enough, and after uh, more than a dozen English colonists went to a neighboring village to try to demand food. Uh, the Indians there attacked them and killed them. This greatly escalated the tensions between the Indians and the Englishmen. Powhatan, however, was not nearly as foolish as the English thought he was. Uh, in fact, he was far less foolish than the English themselves and was able to capture Captain John Smith. Smith was out exploring with a small party and they were captured by a group of Indians um, and taken 